last sort of uh, year was a very good um, stress test of the liability strategy that's been adopted by our company. Um, you know, if, if I go back to 2012 when we started to, um, we got our credit ratings and started to be active in benchmark dollar bonds, you know, it was done quite deliberately in order to, you know, diversify and and deepen the sources of our funding away from the banking market. Um, and as, I, as we grew and, you know, I, I think in many ways to make our liability structure and our ability to access funding through all cycles, um, you know, more robust, um, you know, particularly coming out of the, you know, the impact of the global financial crisis in, you know, 2008, 2009, and also the, the impact of the European sovereign debt crisis in 2011, 2012, which did have an impact on, for example, banking liquidity at the time. So I think this is probably since 2011, 2012, probably the first real you know, stress test of, um, of liquidity in the markets for us anyway. And I think it was quite uh, encouraging for us to find that we were able to you know, execute a, a $1 billion trade in April last year, so you know, roughly a month after the, you know, probably the worst impact of the pandemic on the markets, and you know, we went on to execute bonds in um, in June, and also we did a ten-year trade last uh, September as well. So I, I think um, certainly it's been quite encouraging to see that, you know, in spite of pandemic conditions, that you know, markets have functioned reasonably well. And, and again, I, I, I suppose I'm talking about our own experience, and I think more generally, our experience has been shared by investment grade com companies, um, you know, investment grade issuers. Uh, clearly, I think, and I can't really speak to that, I'm sure you know, Omar and Todd and KC can, but the experience of high yield issuers over that period has been quite different. But I think from our perspective, it, it, it's been quite encouraging that the that the move away from a, a, a business back in 2012 where about 95% of our debt was from the banking markets to a business where now about 70% of our debt's from the debt capital markets. Having moved in that direction, it's served us quite well in, in difficult um, circumstances. And I think even last year, whilst the debt capital markets you know, remained quite open, uh, banking markets were certainly quite challenged as well. Um, yeah, I think this year the funding environments continue to be quite um, you know, constructive. Um, you've had the obviously a fairly robust you know, issuance on the investment grade side and debt capital markets, um, and also you know, banking markets have also, also been you know, have recovered quite well too. I think the, the other thing I, I think was being quite encouraging for us is that in 2015 we we also um, we moved into being a 144A issuer. And I think that's also served us quite well. Um, the, the fact that we've not only had able to access the liquidity in the uh, dollar markets in Asia, but we've also had the ability to access um, you know, dollar, dollar funding out of the US. And I think also that helps us in particular because you know, we're, we're a relatively atypical uh, Asian issuer in the sense that we run a truly global business. And so when we're executing bonds in Asia, we tend to be comped against sort of like local Asian issuers, but when we um, circle into the US markets, there's a very you know, significant amount of um, following for debt in fixed income investors for the global aircraft leasing sector. Um, and we tend to benefit a bit from that. So, you know, I think for us, the two things have been quite, who've worked out quite well for us is first, just moving into becoming a bond issuer, a fixed income issuer. But also, I think in 2015, having diversified our funding platform from Reg S to 144A has also been, you know, also helped us, um, you know, both in more difficult market conditions, but also as markets that recovered as well.